Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. If it is your first time here, then hi, my name's Roisin. In 2023, I am undertaking a no buy year and today's video is going to be my January and February check-in. To put it into context, I do have two videos up already. One outlining why I'm doing a no buy year in 2023 and the other outlining my sort of setup and rules for that no buy year. So I will link them up in a playlist up in the eye if you want to watch them first to put this into that context. And if you've watched those videos already and know the context for this then let's just get on into the check-in. First two months have been fine overall. It's not that there's not been some struggles but there's been a motivation there to keep going with this and it's not because January was like the start of it or a new month or whatever because if you have the context for this this is not my first no buy year it's actually a continuation in a sense of a no buy year that had slightly different parameters around it that I did last year it's not that it's been fine because I've been full of pep and motivation with my new project that I'm sinking my teeth into it's not been that it has mainly been financial I am in a financial position right now that I haven't really been in before. So when I've done my no buys in the past, it's been because I had noticed I had been imbuing material goods with sort of magical properties. I was convincing myself that when I finally purchased the right thing, all my problems in life were going to sort themselves out and I lived in the pursuit of what that right thing would be and the emotional energy that I was giving to shopping and to pursuing things. It's never really been about finance for me. But as I covered in one of those previous videos, pre-Covid I had a direct debit set up that went into my holiday account and that was my holiday savings account. Technically the direct debit is still set up, it has always been set up. But Covid obviously put a stopper in our travel plans. So basically what happened is I have sort of des- no I've not sort of decimated that account. I have emptied that account. That account exists. Money goes into it every month but I got into the habit of being like well we're not going in any big holidays so I don't really need that so I can take it out to buy you know whether it was during my year of one that I was maybe using that money to buy things or in the last year I've actually been using it to pay for holidays but I've been sort of and I don't really know how because the numbers don't lie and I look at the account and I know what's in the account but prior to Covid I was at a point where I was going to America sort of twice a year doing like big holidays so I was going to New York and then generally going to Florida and kind of doing that on rotation maybe with the odd sort of like European break chucked in and because those America holidays were always you know well into four figures to pay the holiday then obviously you needed spending money and food money and whatever I I thought of those holidays as big expenses that I needed that holiday savings account to be being saved into to accommodate that from 2020 to 2022 those holidays for me in terms of my booking pattern because I like to book like a good year in advance plan things like I am a planner I don't do spontaneous holidays so because I like to plan things so far in advance I at no point sort of felt safe either going in those holidays or booking those holidays for that kind of two year period. So this year 2023 is the first year since Covid that I am actually going on what I would term a big holiday but the problem there is that I am dividing these big holidays and thinking that they cost a lot of money and they need to be saved up for and then I've got small holidays you know I'm creating this divide and to me it's like small holidays are basically European holidays. <laughs> Anything that's a sort of three figure holiday is a small holiday in my head and I haven't really, although I have known that that money has been going into my holiday savings account and coming out to pay for these small holidays, in my head if it's three figures or under it's free is is the most ridiculous statement. So I had basically emptied that holiday savings account well sort of not realising that I was emptying it because as far as I was concerned I wasn't going on any big holidays. Did, I, I was going to say does that make sense? No it doesn't make sense. It makes zero sense but that is that is the truth. That is honestly where I was at. Where I'm at right now in December 2022 I went to Dublin and I went to London. So I did two small holidays in the month of December and I am still paying my credit card 
for what I spent not so much in Dublin but in London. Now the thing is Dublin affected London because I spent basically in Dublin I spent my actual money so when I'd get paid at the end of November I put a certain amount into my holiday savings account and I spent that in Dublin so Dublin was actually Dublin was fine because the money was there for Dublin as in debit card money was there for Dublin. In London, because I didn't get paid again before I went to London, basically everything I bought was on my credit card and I include like paying for meals and stuff on that. Like I ran my credit card in London. Lauren and I tend to do this trip every year between Christmas and New Year. We have done other than 2020 itself. We've done it for quite a few years pre-Covid as well. And it is just basically a shopping holiday. So that that is what we do. We go and we're going around shops. And every year I kind of go on that trip thinking, oh, I'm not going to spend a lot of money. But ultimately, if you're going on holiday to wander around shops, you see things, whether you plan to spend money or not. If you're together and the other person's buying stuff, it, it, it to me, it sort of gives me permission. If I'm with my friend who has saved up for the holiday and is spending from her debit card, it excuses me being like oh well you can buy things too even if I know that I spent my debit card money in Dublin which Lauren wasn't on that holiday with me so I'm on my credit card at this point which I shouldn't be because I have this holiday savings account that if I hadn't completely emptied it would have covered this holiday it's just a mess basically I am in the position now where I am still essentially paying not exactly that credit card but the problem was so I ran my credit card up in London just between Christmas and New Year then I had to pay that off which I did but then the balance on my Paris trip that I'm going on in a few weeks needed paid so that got paid then you know our tickets for Disney for Paris got paid and suddenly my credit card was was working up again so then when I get paid again at the end of February I paid my credit card so I have basically been skint for the last two months. So that that motivation, motivation's maybe not the right word, but it's maybe just like, even if I wasn't on a no buy, this wouldn't be an issue right now because I wouldn't be able to afford to be buying anything because I spent so much money in December that I'm still in the cycle of have paid credit card, then have had to use credit card again because have emptied bank account by paying credit card. It's utterly ridiculous. It was just enjoying my holiday but not having had adequate preparations in place savings wise to, to have that holiday, to fund that enjoyment of that holiday. So now I'm paying it kind of in reverse and my Alaska balance also needs paid by mid-June. I'm paying £600 a month basically to that holiday. So in the last few months I've been paying my credit card paying my £600 a month to Alaska, paid my Paris bill, paid my Disney tickets, paid our like transfer to and from the airport. All of this stuff has just been adding up and I don't have my holiday savings account. It's not robust enough yet to actually be covering the outgoings that I've got on holidays. So although holidays are not restricted under my no buy year and it, it has just kind of been bad timing in that I was away in December then I'm going away in March but that actually needed paid in February and then I'm also having to pay my Alaska balance by June so there's a lot going out at the start of the year and it's it's just been probably after I get paid at the end of March I'll be able to pay my credit card and then I'll be okay because I think my no buy will sort of kick in well not that it'll kick in because obviously it's kicked in already but what I mean is when I get paid at the end of March I'll clear my credit card and then in April and May I'll still have to make my Alaska payment but that would be covered by my direct debit that goes to my holiday anyway. So what I mean is that my what's left once my bills come off and once my, my direct debit to my holiday account comes off, what's left that's actually my disposable income, I won't be desperately trying to use that to both get through the month and also pay the balance on another holiday and put aside spending money for another holiday and food money for another holiday and all of that jazz. So. I think it'll maybe calm down after the end of March so that'll probably not be hanging over me quite so much because the fact that that disposable income will not be getting spent on stuff will mean 
I can pay if I need to extra to my credit card to make sure it's it's cleared in full and then I'm not going to be respending it because I'm not going to be buying you know clothes and makeup and whatever so I feel like I just need to get through to April at this point but I I have never and, and I know that's so privileged to say I have never really been in this situation before where my outgoings have exceeded my income and also exceeded any savings that I might have had in place to account for that outgoing and I know the thing is I'm mainly talking about holidays and that's a luxury and it's an indulgence and it's things I've chosen to sign up to go on like I know there's a lot of people because we are in a cost of living crisis right now and that has had a huge impact that in terms of like my bills have crept up and up and up and up and that's I think why like I haven't been able to pay off my credit card and then function for the rest of the month without reaching for it again like it's because so much everything is going up in price but I also like obviously do acknowledge that some people for some people things are going up in price to a point that they're not going to get holidays or be not buying clothes and makeup because they're on a no buy year like they will just not be able to afford it so I do obviously need to acknowledge that I'm still in a very privileged lucky position but I feel so stressed right now about money in a way that I just have never felt stressed about money before. So that has, for a start, just made not buying things really easy because there's not been any money there to buy them. So there's the first part of the check-in. On to the next part of the check-in, something that I think has made it easier for me to be in a no-buy over the past two months is that right now I have a reservoir of new stuff. What I mean by that is that I have stuff that I bought in Dublin, which still feels very new, and I have stuff that I bought in London that feels even newer. And the reason that, that stuff feels even newer is because I have not yet allowed myself to use any of those things. And the reason for that is because they're on my credit card. Now, as I discussed, in terms of the way that that cycle has gone, I have probably actually paid them off, but I've paid them off then had to use my credit card again because I have used all my income paying off my credit card bill. So I feel like the cycle that I'm still in until that credit card is back to zero and I have a month, hopefully April, where I do not touch it and do not need to touch it, I will not feel like my credit card has been paid off in terms of that stuff because that stuff has been the starting point for me using my credit card in a way that has had the knock on of how I am still paying it and using it. I still haven't opened that stuff therefore because that hasn't yet been absorbed into my life yet it's all still sitting in bags waiting to be opened I feel like I'm sort of teetering along knowing that probably in April when I have paid that credit card off and completely and have a month when I don't need to use it again I can open that stuff and it will feel like new stuff so I feel like maybe that's making it easier that I know that's kind of waiting in the future for me and in the fairly near future, like basically next month, I should be out of the, the cycle that I'm in at the moment and be able to open that stuff and give it to myself. So I'm not giving it to myself until I've actually paid for it, but that means it's there. I am a little bit apprehensive about it though, like it's a double-edged sword, is that I have that stuff that once I have paid it off, I will allow myself to have it and it will feel like new stuff and I'll probably film a whole video with it so you guys will see it but on the flip side I'm also slightly wary I think now of opening it because I don't want that sort of I've got new stuff feeling to snowball like I've talked about how in my year of one I would make my one purchase and it was like it revved up all that sort of all those shopping behaviours of like identifying something and coveting it and buying it and getting it and bringing it in and having the whole rush of that and then I wanted to do it again and it, it was much more difficult for me to start and stop that than it was to just be on a no-buy year because I was kind of letting myself do it and then having to pull it back. And I'm slightly wary that when I do open up that stuff it's going to give me the sort of hit of like new stuff and maybe make me want more of it particularly because 
it's very nice stuff if I do say so myself like as much as I am academically sitting here looking at the figures and knowing how I feel about the figures it wasn't a good choice to use my credit card the way that I did when I was in London but I still really like all the stuff I'm going to be really glad that I bought once I have actually got out of this phase when I'm in sort of a bad financial place because I bought it like it is it's like horrible that it will be sort of three months rolling on from that shopping binge being actually paid for because of the way that other things have fallen that have needed paid for over the last two months and this month for me actually going away and needing money for going away and whatever that's all made it very difficult but if that if all that stuff hadn't existed I would have paid that credit card in January and it would have been fine that would have been it done the financial side of it is horrible and I don't ever want to be in this position again because I don't like it at all. So I know like once the financial cloud has lifted and I'm back on even ground and I've got a zero balance and I've got no debt again, like I will be fine. And I will be really glad that I bought this stuff and I'll be really excited about it. So I am a bit nervous that that will make me want more and more and more new stuff. I don't know if it will because I did get some stuff just this week there as gifts and it hasn't kind of made me want to go and buy more like I feel really satisfied with it so maybe I'll feel satisfied I hope I feel satisfied but I don't know for definite so I am a bit nervous about opening it but I think the anticipation of knowing that it's there and that it can be opened and it will be opened at some point possibly makes being on a no buy a little bit easier so that's there to consider the third thing I wanted to talk about was the types of things I have wanted. Because in January, I think one of the things that made it a lot easier was that the only thing I really saw that I wanted is a dress from The Vampire's Wife. It's a dress that I actually, they had released in a maxi version. Um, I think it's called The Night Sparrow or something like that. That dress is beautiful, but it was a maxi. And I feel like one of the things I am better at now since I started like my first no buy in 2020 is knowing now when I look at something and think it's really beautiful, I do manage now in a way that I didn't before to sort of take the step back and say, it's really beautiful, but is it remotely practical? Now I'm not saying I make the most practical choices ever. I've said that during my year of one, I bought a lot of things that I really love, but a lot of them are like special occasion things. Like I bought a Falconetti dress, for example, which I love and I've got two weddings this year and I'm probably going to wear it to both and I will love wearing it I love the dress and it makes me really really happy but it, it is still a special occasion piece it's not something I'm turning up to you know go to Tesco in or anything but there is a difference between a sort of special occasion piece that will actually suit the special occasions I go to and like this level of maxi dress two different levels of there's like special occasion and then there's like you know special 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 occasion and realistically I just don't have the lifestyle where a dress of that the, the maxi version would really get that many outings in my wardrobe and before my first no buy year I didn't have the distance to make that call so when those super special occasions do raise their heads I have got ball gowns I am prepared for when I get invited to a ball I'm grand I don't need another one so I was able to distance myself enough from the maxi version of the dress that I have never been, you know, really tempted to actually commit to it. But they have released a midi version and it's still beautiful and it would still be a sort of special occasion dress. I will insert a picture of it. It is stunning. I want it so badly. But I think although I do want that dress, like I really want that dress, the reason it's not been a danger to my no buy is because of the price of it. So I think it's £1,750. It is the best part of £2,000 but it is in the the one somethings and I think it's it's £1,750 or £1,795. There or thereabouts. It is stunning. It is glorious. But even if I had not been on my no buy in January and February, I would not have been buying that dress. Even if I had had free reign to buy what I wanted in January and February and even if my finances weren't in the state that they currently are, I wouldn't have been buying that dress on first sight. Like it might be something I would have decided to save up for and have a plan to buy in the much nearer future than I have any intentions to buy it if I ever buy it. 
it is something I think I would have probably committed to saving up for. It's something I do really like and I would like to own, but it would never have been something that I was just buying on first sight. Something that this not being my first no buy and having that history of doing no buys, it has kind of made it more okay for me to wait for things. And I'm much more okay with doing that than I used to be. And I think the thing, although in my year of one I spent a lot of money and I bought a lot of really beautiful things that I love but that were maybe not the most super practical in terms of filling gaps in my everyday wardrobe, it did mean I was sort of very involved for that year with these very high price point brands because I kind of got into the headspace where I was like, if I'm only buying one thing a month, I'm going to buy like the best thing that I want and that the stuff that I really, really, really want tends to be very expensive, unfortunately. I was very much involved with those brands for that year and that's what I was watching the stock of and whatever. And it's given me the experience to know that it, with that kind of brand in particular, it's a very high price point, but it's also, it's a slightly, I don't know if I would use the word niche, but it's slightly under the radar in terms of like I think once you get into the vampire's wife it's quite a cult like thing actually in a lot of ways like people who love the brand really love the brand but it's not the most mainstream I suppose of designer brands to be getting involved in so you don't tend to have the stock turnover things don't sell out instantly they do sell out and things are definitely made in small batches and released in quite small batches and then you wait quite a long time for things to come back even when it's like their core things and um, so like the Falconetti at the moment is not out in red and I'm sure it will come back in red but we might be waiting a year for it. So these kind of brands do move more slowly. I think knowing that helps me to relax a little bit around them in a way that high street brands, although I think we've maybe moved slightly towards slower fashion and slower turnover in the high street brands just based on how often I see things in a shop for and I don't know that could be more of a reflection on the stock that comes to Glasgow and how quickly the, the shop staff turn it over or whatever than it is on the brand so maybe I'm giving them more credit than they're due in that sense but I don't think we get quite as quick a turnaround with high street brands now as we used to but it's still obviously much higher than it is with brands like The Vampire's Wife so although I want that dress and although I would love to own it, it's not a threat to my no-buy based on A, the price, and also B, like, I know at the end of this year if I still want that dress, there is a high percentage of chance that I will be able to get it. So that makes it more bearable. Now, I did get a slightly different type of test in February with the things that I saw in February that I wanted. So first of all, and I actually had a very sort of clear indication of the difference in this type of wanting because I saw a man at the airport when we were waiting to come back from Dublin wearing a Babar jumper. Now, I love Babar. Absolute childhood memories, loved him, fave thing. And a few years ago, Lanvan did a collection with Babar things in it. Um, I actually had put one up in my Instagram stories. I loved there was a key ring that I just thought was beautiful. So I put it in my Instagram story back in 2020. And then I saw this man at the airport wearing this Babar jumper and like turned around to my friend Lindsay because I think when I put it in my story, she and I had ended up chatting about it because it was one of those like childhood things we'd never talked about before. And then I, I shared the Lanfai collection and she was like, oh my God, I love Babar. So I was in Dublin with Lindsay, this guy at the airport's wearing the Babar jumper and I turned around to Lindsay and I'm like, Lindsay, Lindsay, there's a guy over there wearing a Babar jumper and we just like both had a moment and I just presumed that it was from the Lanvan collection. I might not be saying Lanvan correctly but that's how we're going to say it. So I just presumed it was this very expensive super designer collaboration that it would be a four figure price tag and I was like, Oh, it's beautiful and I love it, but it is what it is. Well, no, it turns out it's from Zara, because Lindsay Googled and she was like, oh, it's from Zara. And Zara right now have a Babar collection, which I don't really, I don't really, I don't know, I suppose. Should I be surprised really if Babar did a Lanva collection? Like, 
obviously these things trickle down. I probably shouldn't be surprised. So it's in the menswear section if anyone is interested and not on a know why. So the jumper that the man at the airport had on was £35.99. So it was this really attainable price point of this thing that I really wanted and it linked to this thing that I had wanted from Lavan that I couldn't have justified the price of and that was a different kind of test. I was this close so there are two jumpers, a cardigan and a t-shirt. There might be more but spoiler alert those are the four things I have and I was literally, I was on the Zara website, I was looking at like store finder, I was checking the stock, I was doing the whole thing as if I was going to buy it and then had to like put it down and be like no I can't I'm on my no buy and that felt like more of a test because it would have been so easy to buy those pieces because they are an attainable price point even if I bought the four of them it was going to be like 150 pounds all in which is still a lot of money especially when I'm sitting seeing my credit card is like you know hanging over me at the moment and I'm very stressed about money like 150 pounds is not a sniffable amount but in comparison to the, the Lanvac collection, it felt like I deserve this, I have wanted this, I wanted it at designer level, this is the, the level that I can afford it at like and it's right there and I should have it and I deserve it and, and I saw the man and I noticed it from across the airport and you know it, it felt like I should have it. It felt really unjust that I was on a no buy at that point but basically so I came back from Dublin and I told my grand I was like saw this man at the airport, he had a Babar jumper on and it's from Zara and boo and just basically bent her ear off about it because that was that was all I wanted to talk about for the next couple of days. And then we had a little holiday in Edinburgh, my gran and I, just earlier this week and Edinburgh Zara had quite a few of the pieces and my gran when she saw them was like they're actually really sweet aren't they? And she was like just try this one on. So I tried it on and there was part of me that was actually hoping because it was men's that even the small would be just a bit too big in like the shoulders and stuff but it was fine. Then my gran was like no that's really cute you need to have that and I was like I'm on my no buy and we had a back and forth and then she decided she would buy the things for me so so I did get the things. I didn't break my no buy but my gran bought them for me because I was on a no buy so I've not really unfortunately for the purposes of this video had the sort of full emotional kind of go through of wanting it, not buying it and having to live with not owning it because I've, I've got it even though I didn't purchase it. But it was a different kind of test but I was, I was resisting and I would have continued to resist it I think but it felt very unjust in a way that wanting the vampire's wife dress didn't feel particularly unjust, it didn't feel stressful that I wasn't getting it whereas like seeing the Babar stuff from Zara and not being able to get it felt stressful as ridiculous as that sounds. It did, it felt like an injustice. So there was a difference there in the attainability and the factor of the attainability price wise into how much of a test it was because of how easy it would have been to buy that versus to buy that even though I also know like I am in the position where if I'm not paying off my credit card because I've gone wild with another vampire's wife dress actually is one of the things that's on that credit card spoiler alert for when I do do that London haul I know that I am in a fortunate enough position and it is a very fortunate position that if I was to give up other things I could save up for that dress like you know I'm not saying it would be happening in a month but I know I could save up for it. Like if I wanted to give up, you know, a holiday or something, and that is the price of this dress, is a holiday, which is terrifying. But if I wanted to give that up, if I wasn't, you know, using my holiday savings account to pay for Alaska at the moment, that holiday savings account could add up and I could use the money for the dress instead of another holiday if that's what I wanted to do. So I know that's a really fortunate position to be in. But I also know that I could only do that if I was giving up other things because I know I wouldn't want to really give up my full holiday so I would maybe say some of it would come from the holiday savings account and some of it would just come from just saving up a little bit extra every month by not buying things so essentially by being on a no buy. I know that I could do that to save up for the vampire's wife dress. I would hobble myself from attaining that as quickly as possible by giving in to things from Zara and whatever. And that's what I need to maybe make sure I'm getting into my head is there is a balance between 
my fantasy self and what I actually wear and I need to have enough functioning clothes in my wardrobe to actually get dressed to go to work every day or to go out at the weekend to the places that I actually go you know to meet my friends for a coffee or for lunch or to wander around the shops none of which I am doing in a vampire's wife dress and heels not my vibe not doing that at the weekend so there is no point in me having loads and loads of special occasion pieces in my wardrobe I do need to maybe make my peace sometimes more with buying high street things when I am buying again this is obviously very much for the future because that's what my year of one really showed me is that I bought a lot of really nice things that I love but they were not necessarily practical to my life so I do I need a balance of that but also if I really want something and I want to save up for it I need to be better at passing up on the lower level things that I just want and just feel I should have because there's no real obstacle to me having it in terms of the price itself is not presenting an obstacle but anyway that is for the future but in terms of within my know why those more inexpensive things actually provided more of a test because I felt like I should have them and it shouldn't be even that considered a purchase even though they would add up to £150 which should be a considered amount of money to spend. Anyway this video is going to get really long so just really quickly the other thing that tested me so I was in Edinburgh for a holiday under my definitions of my holidays for this year are that they have to be two nights or more so it was a holiday it wasn't just an overnight and I am allowing myself to buy souvenirs on holiday but I had decided ahead of going to Edinburgh that I wasn't buying any souvenirs because it was just a little sort of staycation in Edinburgh. You know, I didn't really need a fridge magnet that said Edinburgh on it. I didn't need a souvenir of a city that I can go to in less than an hour on a train and can go to any weekend that I choose. Although we were there and we were staying in a hotel for a couple of nights, it wasn't really a holiday in that sense that I would want to commemorate. So I was like, you're not buying souvenirs in Edinburgh. And then when I was in H Beauty at the Gucci counter, which is... I think probably the only counter that really tests me. I love Guerlain as well, but they're my two brands, but Gucci, Gucci just speaks to my soul. So whilst I was there, I was looking at lipsticks and there's a new one, I think it was a limited edition shade before, but it's new to the permanent lineup called Valeria Rose. Beautiful, the girl on the counter was wearing it. I probably wouldn't have picked it out, but when I saw it on her, it was lovely. So I was really tempted by that. And I had 25 pounds worth of Paris points. So I was kind of, I was very close to being like, oh, I'll just get it because I've got £25 there. It's really only £12 and, you know, it could be a, a memento of my Edinburgh shit. And I had to have a word with myself to be like, no, like, a lipstick doesn't count as a memento. You know, like, souvenirs, I know what I mean when I meant souvenirs and I meant things that, like, literally said, like, Edinburgh 2023 on them would be my souvenir as such. Like, it wasn't an excuse for me to buy things as mementos of the trip. I very much had like proper sort of touristy souvenirs in mind when I said if I go on holiday I'm going to allow myself to buy a souvenir so Gucci lipstick wasn't counting as a souvenir just wasn't but I argued it back and forth with myself and then the other thing that I wanted was the Gucci lip liner in the shade number three well a lot of them actually but particularly the shade number three I think it really genuinely would fill a gap within my collection even though I have a lot of lip liner so it's mad that there could be a gap but I think it genuinely would and I think it's one I would get a lot of weight out of because it would go with a lot of the shades that I really like to wear and they're £24 so I had enough points I could have bought it and it wouldn't have been breaking my no buy because I've said I'm allowed to spend like points or vouchers freely because the big thrust of it this year is financial so I'd said I was allowed to spend them and I technically could have got that lip liner but the thing that stopped me was that I had just done my makeup inventory before I went to Edinburgh. So I put that video up on Wednesday. So it was very fresh in my mind that I have nearly $15,000 worth of makeup still in my inventory. Even though I started my Beauty No Buy in 2018. And have been using stuff up and have been project panning and have been decluttering. I've still got $15,000 worth of stuff nearly just under that like 14 something and that that stopped me from making that purchase so that is something I would say if you're looking at doing a no buy particularly if it's beauty do an inventory and put the values next to it because 
that kind of scares you into thinking I've already spent this much on it. I do not need any more. So that stopped me making that purchase but I was very, very tempted. Anyway, that's the majority of the notes that I've made for this check-in. This video will be really long, but one quick last thing to say is that this hasn't yet been a huge issue, but it's something that I suspect is going to test me in the next six weeks or so, which is that at the end of April, I am going to a conference with my work in the south of France. Now that probably sounds far more glamorous than it is actually going to be, but I will be in the south of France at the end of April with work for a conference. So it is three days and it's going to be warm. So the, the average temperature for April is 17 degrees. The average temperature for May is 21 degrees. It's literally the last week of April that we're there. So I think it will probably be edging towards the 20 degree mark at that point. So it's going to be warm, but it's a work conference. So I am going to need to look work appropriate. And if you watched my video where I introduced my no by year and talked about what I think the tests will be this year, I was talking about workwear and the fact that I've now moved from one of our other offices to head office, which is a more formal environment, although I'm doing the same job. It's just that I've moved to the head office, so it's more... I'm in with other people who are doing more office-based functions. So I'm already this year struggling a little bit with the fact that I don't really have a workwear wardrobe as such. Previously the office that I was in was upstairs to one of the depots of my work and it was a very casual environment. So I was wearing like jeans and a jumper and I'm not, I've not gone super formal but I've definitely sort of been upping my game a little bit going to work. Not necessarily for rainy weather which has been like my big challenge is like when it's wet and windy in the mornings when I'm going to work it's still so much more practical weather wise for me to put on like my snow boots and you know, a big parka jacket and whatever, which is not really the workwear vibe. But then I have shoes in my office that I change into and whatever. So I've been able to make it work. But I think in the heat of the south of France, I'm not going to want to be wearing like tailoring or like wool trousers or anything like that. And most of my summery clothing is more casual. It's more for going on summer holidays. Because I live in Scotland so we don't really get like well having said that we had that horrible heat wave in July um, but I have quite a small selection of clothing that is designed for that kind of weather because it's just not weather that we really get here so the clothing that I have for that is more for going on holiday so it's not really work wear so I do think I'm going to be struggling a little bit over the next couple of months because I don't know what I'm wearing to this thing at the end of April and it's already in my head that I need to figure out what I'm wearing. This is definitely the sort of occasion that if it had come up and I was not on my no-buy, I'd be like, well, I just need to go buy things. And I have already identified things that I could buy that would sort me through the conference, but I can't buy them because I'm on my no-buy. So I need to work within the confines of what I own already. But even though when I was in London, I bought a couple of things specifically with this move to head office that was happening in January in mind. So I have I have purchased like smart clothing and I've been able to kind of wear my midi dresses and things or just wear jeans with like smarter jumpers and whatever in the meantime. I have been making it work but I think it's gonna be it's gonna be another level of business dress being at a conference versus even being in my head office. But also the heat factor I think is going to just complicate things so it's not stressing me out yet but I think as that gets closer I am going to get more and more stressed with that. In terms of things that I foresee coming up that's I think my main struggle that I think is on the horizon but anyway I'm going to leave this video here so thank you so much if you watched it all the way through to the end because I know it's going to be a really long one so I really appreciate you spending this time with me. I'm going to try for the month of March to have a video go live every Wednesday night in addition to my Sunday videos so do make sure you check back on Wednesday for the next one and I will see you in that video. Bye!